Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremy, founder of QuickMail.io. Hey, and this is Jack, Chief Lead Generation Officer at SalesBread.com. Today, tear down. There you go, tear down. But a different tear down, a different tear down, a paper tear down. We have a mailer that I was sent this morning from Gusto, the payroll software thing. We'll, we'll get into it in a minute, but we're going to show business, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not quite sure about that either. Um, we'll get into it, but we're going to explain how they use direct mail with their cold email campaign. And we're going to do a brief teardown on both uh, the paper and the email version of them. So but before that, we want to hear Jack one liner. Uh, all right. So today, most B2B companies lack the time or expertise to turn cold prospects into leads. At salesbread.com, we generate one lead or booked appointment every day by sending ultra personalized cold emails and LinkedIn messages. If you want to know what's working today in Outbound, or you just want to get in touch about potentially bringing us on to help you with lead gen, head over to salesbread.com slash contact and we'll get you sorted. Booyah. And I'm going to make What's it yours? short. If you need a cold outreach by email and you need a powerful solution or you have problems with deliverability, and then just come and, uh, and check us out. Don't forget about that free auto warmer. It's good stuff for deliverability. Okay, Jeremy, right. so I'm going to share my screen now and we're going to start first with the Gusto emails and then we're going to see how they tie this in to their mailer mm -hmm. all right so screen sharing requested here we go can you see me yeah if you can zoom a little bit on this that'd be cool can do all right let's zoom i see a dog you do a... see a dog yeah so here's a read through thoughts on gusto as a subject line hi first name i know these sale sales emails can be a little awkward so here's a picture of our company dog finley standing on a desk to break the ice. Now that we're old friends, if you had to give your current payroll provider a score between one and 10, what would it be? If you didn't just yell 10 at your monitor, here are two very simple, very good reasons why we should have a quick conversation about moving companies' payroll to Gusto. Things move faster on Gusto. Running payroll takes anywhere between 36 seconds and 10 minutes. I promise to include another picture of Finley in my next email. Looking mm -hmm. forward to filling up your inbox with pics of this cute dog, John. All right, that's email one full of John's attempt at humor. Let's see how we did on the follow-up. <laughs> um, re, thoughts on Gusto as a subject line. So they're replying to the same thread. Hi, Jack, any thoughts on that question mark? P.S. Finley brought in a friend to work today and I just had to share. Okay, so a lot of and humor. For, for the listeners, we see a picture of uh, two dogs, basically the dog from the previous picture plus another dog that is in different right. color. And I, I should uh, point out that these are French Bulldogs, in yeah. case any listener is a fan of the breed. Um, all right, so it's time to do a little tearing down of let's the email. Do right, so let's start with subject line. What do you think, Jeremy? Thoughts on Gusto. Um, I don't know Gusto, potentially. Uh, so I'll be like, what's that? Um, maybe pick up my curiosity. Maybe it's a good thing. I don't know. I would open. Would you? Well, they're leaving it to chance that yes. the, the word gusto is going to do the job, right? So I'm not typically a fan of this. I would have uh, labeled it closer to uh, this payroll theme they have going along. Um, although maybe they tested some variations and I know for a fact that payroll, that credit card processing, that world is blood red ocean, right? So maybe they're like, let's go a completely different angle. And if that's the case, nice. Uh, but I do not recommend just hoping someone's heard of the brand or. But um, honestly, you, know. you could just do thoughts, question mark. You know, that's also something you could try. And that way you Very remove good. the jargon, remove, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And it looks like, hey, I want to pick up your brain on something. It's, it's like question, question mark, right? Yeah. Something. Plus, it's tough. The, this this word is a. Uh, it's not only a brand. It's it's also an English word. They even define it at the bottom of the email here. Uh, here, how to pronounce great it. enjoyment, energy, and enthusiasm. So it's like thoughts on gusto. Hey, gusto's good. You should have it. Uh, I don't know why it's relevant. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay, cool. So 
they they went very strong on the humor angle. But I think in order to use this, um, you have to have everything else perfect. I think just um, David Ogilvy is quoted many times saying, don't be cute, be direct. So I'm going to listen to David and say, that's probably something I would never uh, put all my money into. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do agree a hundred percent. At the same time, we also have to keep in mind what's the audience, right? So- Payroll if, managers. Payroll yeah, exactly. Man- Are they the most funnier people in the world or, <laughs> <laughs> or do Fair they point. crave? for you know distraction and Fair being funny. like an accountant for example they're just like looking for like can we go straight to the point please 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 you know kind of thing uh, because they're being charged by the time uh, so mm. is the account manager or payroll manager the same sort of i don't know right that's something you figured out by d- doing your testing but i do remember that when when i was reaching out to employees uh, they crave the distraction so depends what type right I think that's a, a great note here. So maybe if you are going after employees, so, um, and that for me means lower than C level, mm-hmm. maybe even lower than VP, because you'd like to think those execs are uh, jerks. Not jerks, no, just Bank preoccupied robots. with more important stuff than uh, distracting emails. But yeah, lower that this could break through. So let's actually pay attention to the value props that they included. And we read through the email, there's a lot of, you could call it fluff, but it's jokes. It's humor trying to get uh, through to that person on the other side of the screen. If I fast forward to the good stuff here, they're pointing out, uh, like I mentioned, two quote, very good reasons. Uh, One is they're saying speed, you can run payroll faster. And then two, is they will include another picture of the dog in the next email. Yeah, I like this one too. It's basically a promise that I'm going to fulfill one of my promise. This is what's going to happen. So it's pretty Ooh. cool. I wonder if you actually reply to this email, do they reply with the picture of the dog or is it just for their follow-up sequence? You see what I mean? It's like, hey, you promised me a picture. Where is it? I don't know. I'm going to guess that unless you specifically say, where's the picture, they it probably might won't. not include the dog. It, it's a note to the email that's coming. So let me ask you your thoughts on that. Is it a good idea to tell people that you're gonna follow up again with them in the first touch? Yes, and I, I, I believe yes. Uh, obviously we okay. can argue, you can argue no, but I believe yes for two reasons. The first one is a permission sort of marketing. It's like, mm-hmm. this is what's going to happen if you don't reply. It's okay. And the second point is trust building because when you effectively do follow up with exactly what you said you're following up, you know, in, in a subconscious, uh, you will actually start trusting this person because they actually, you know, followed up on what they say they will do. So it's cool. Commitment and consistency is yeah. at play here. One of the psychological weapons of influence. Plus, like we, you know, quote why would you, you want like a cute dog picture? Yeah. So I I can't let Gusto off the hook that easy. No, I agree. Because what is the call to action? What is that should be a PS. I do agree with you. There's no call to action. Yeah. If anything, it's the question is about is at the top. That's weird. That threw me off, actually. Like asking a question in the middle of the email. Not this one, sorry, so, the other one. Like you have the picture, you have the sort of like breaking the ice. I do like that they say like, this is to break up the ice. It's like, okay, I right. give you a pass for that. You know, even if I'm, right. you know, this is not so funny maybe for me, then okay, I give you a pass. I'm more of a cat right. person, for example. But then here it's like, they say, oh, now we're all friends, whatever. If you give your current payroll provider a score between one and 10, what would it be? And it's like, it's in the middle of the email. I'm not really sure who you are, where we are. And it's like, it's kind of like awkward in the order. If you see what I mean, what, what do you think, Jack? What do you make of it? Yeah, so number one, it, it, it is black and white missing a clear call to action. Yes. If you could even call this a call to action, I'm sure it's not a it would be action. better off. You, you always need to end a cold email 99% of the time with a question mark. So I'm going to ding them on that. And you're going to see a similar theme when we review the mailer um with call to action i'll i'll 
try not to let the cat out of the bag here. But um, yeah, this would have been a lot better if they just ended it. Look, they can keep all the cute stuff about the dog, but I would have added at the bottom. Um, can I send you more details? If yes. This, you know, struck so a nerve or yeah. yeah. Or to borrow what they've written. Um, if you're not yelling 10 out of 10 regarding your current payroll provider, can I shoot over a few more details? Some, something like that, that ends it with a call to action. Okay. And so I will do Jeremy. them actually on the next line for, it's fine to say, I promise to include a picture of, you know, the dog in the next email, but it's not cool to say, looking forward to filling up your inbox with pics, pictures of cute dogs. It's like, that's fine, but dude, you know, my inbox, I'm replying to like 50 emails every day. I don't want some idiot to actually fill my inbox even more with like pictures of, you know, cute That's dogs. where you have to be very careful with humor. Yeah. because it can backfire super easily. It's, it's very hard to deliver no humor, humor through. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, that's fine, because in cold email, I don't really think you should lean on humor to get uh, the reply. So if you don't can- Don't you think you actually help your brand to some extent, like, you know, to give like a less drastic, especially in those environment where, you know- Keep it have, light. Like a bank, Keep it like for light, example. But you're not a comedian. You know what I mean? You're, you're sure. there to start conversations about a product or service, period. Sure. W one thing you have to keep in mind as uh, someone who sends cold email is like you're always representing, whether you know it or not, the brand that you know, you're emailing from. So for example, if you are a bank and you're emailing your customer and then you're staying like super formal, this is what people expect. But if suddenly you're a bank and you're actually sending like a humorous type of email, then it's like, oh, that's different. You know, that's like interruption sort of like not expected. So I'm curious what's going to happen right. kind of thing. Then I think that's why a lot of the neo bank are actually just winning that way. They appear like less strict, serious kind of thing and more like relatable. It's true. So it's true. That could be a tool. I, I mean, it's just like, just be mindful that, that why you're doing it and, you know, is that really working? Well said. Uh, I think we can cover the second email briefly, and then we'll get into this uh, mailer. Um, thoughts on Gusto, same subject line, same thread. Hi, Jack. Any thoughts on that classic bump email? Yeah. It's fun. a shame that any thoughts on that was the body here. They could have added something that I'm going to uh, borrow from this mailer here. They could have added the fact that they do things beyond payroll like file lo local, state, and federal payroll taxes, for yep. example. That, that would have been a great thing to include in this bump email because if my payroll wasn't the pain point, but filing taxes was, they could have won me over. That's right. You know, so that's why I think humor can be very distracting where it's like, oh, you put all this effort into taking a cute dog photo, lining up the Frenchies, making sure they didn't bark, and then um, you miss out on the opportunity here because you left out a big selling point. You're making a really good point because at the end of the day, what will you remember from this email? Would you remember the payroll or the dog, right? And that's really, that is the why, puppies. you know, whenever you see like a commercial about like a soap for, you know, your washing machine and stuff like that, you always mm. see uh, boring ads, but they make it on purpose because at some point in time, at least, um, in Europe, they tried humorous type of ads and people only remember the, there was a joke, but they the don't like, didn't remember the product. And they said, well, we're going to have to, you know, back paddle a little bit here and make them boring again. And that's why you got boring ads. Yeah. So I'm not saying to be boring, but um, <laughs> don't expect jokes to bring home the bacon. Jeremy, are you good if we switch over to the mailer here? Yeah. I, that's okay. a piece of toilet paper. Let's you got do it. Here. Uh, Correct. <laughs> All right. So this, you can see this was addressed to payroll manager at my company emails at sell. Now let's read into this uh, mailer over here. So it says, Hey there, mm. you're starting a business, which probably means tackling a hefty to-do list. Eventually payroll is going to be on that list and no one likes long nights curled up next to tax forms and a calculator. Fortunately, there's Gusto. We make payroll and a lot of other things easy for 
100,000 plus small businesses. We calculate wages. We file local, state, and federal payroll taxes. We make it easy to pay contractors. We can even help with new hire, new hire onboarding, workers' comp benefits, and HR as you need them. Starting a small business hard enough, let us make payroll easy. And then they have weirdly the first name only of somebody that I doubt works at the company. Uh, <laughs> the last name it's probably uh, ab testing pictures of people though. yeah and who did they pick um just somebody without a last name i would have liked to see a real person specialist sounds like a weird job title that they made up but uh they've got a phone number a 1-800 number and then a link, link to a landing page and then here's something cool they threw in a testimonial Without Gusto, I'd be lost. They've made my first business foray an amazing adventure and kept me from horrible mistakes. Now, a lot to unpack here. South Oregon, right? Uh, do you live in South Oregon? No. Bummer. Wouldn't yeah. it have been great if they could have matched my state or city with a testimonial? If they have over 100,000 business owners, don't you think that's possible? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, that's so, my next comment is that what's more important yeah. saying you got 100,000 customers or do you have like, you know, 20,000 in your state? No. I don't know. Well, or even better, 5,000 uh, agency owners and CEOs. That, that, that may even be more important because it matches the business model. But, but they can't match even the first name, right? They got high there, even though they got your email address. So clearly, right. that's, the yeah. personalization there is lacking a bit. <laughs> so I would note, if you were going to do a mailer campaign with cold email, have the data talk to each other. You've already gone through the trouble to find the first name, company, email. Carry that over to your list broker, if possible to make sure that this mailer is a little bit more personalized. Now, granted, I'm not going to recommend the other merge tags like custom intro or custom PS. I don't think it's appropriate for a mailer. You want to send this to 20,000 people. Why? Because, well, with direct mail, you don't have to worry about spam filters, for example. You do want to send lots of these out mm -hmm. because the it's conversion like rate is not as good as cold email. Yeah. So... There's that. There's a the personalization element. Uh, I think you appreciated the intro paragraph. Is that right, Jeremy? Uh, let me reread it. You started a business, which probably means you're tackling some somehow. I think they they do a pretty good job at setting the pace as to you know what they are talking about. Here we don't have this any is, funny dogs yeah. anymore. <laughs> We're just like going uh, straight you to do. Business. You do though. No, uh, it's uh, it says no one likes long nights curled up next to tax forms and a calculator. Yeah, I think that's okay. I don't think that's necessarily same. humorous. No, but it, it's more painting oh, a picture a in someone's. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe that's my no, American. Uh, okay, okay. I, I'm here to tell you that that is a joke or an attempt at Lost a joke because you Lost wouldn't curl up to a calculator. Yeah, and yet another reason to probably skip all that uh, joke <laughs> nonsense, right? But um, notice this is problem, agitate, solve formula here. So it's. Uh, yeah. You have a huge to-do list. You definitely don't want to be spending all night with the calculator solution. Fortunately, there's Gusto. So pretty classic formula yeah. here. I think this is a great intro. I'm fine with it. Um, I, I actually am so happy that they listed all the things they do in one paragraph. This oh, could have been two or three follow-up emails. It's true. Yeah. With follow up by mail, is harder, right? Physical mail. So you kind of have it. I had to put some you, more stuff. You have in. to put it all there. Mm -hmm. You have to put it all there. But what they are still. Multiple pages? What do you think? Uh, yeah, there's a back to it. I'll, I'll share what it is for a second. But um, no, I, I think it's important to include more in a mailer. They say uh, long copy converts that the more you tell the more you sell is the mm. uh is the saying but they still skated around a call to action all they yeah. said was let us make payroll easy come on tell me what to do head over to gusto.com slash start to get your free trial today that's a brilliant comment because that's effectively what i was thinking of doing like hey let me check gusto.com slash start what's that and hopefully this is a, a 
good thing explaining me and not just like a, a login onto your login and your password kind of thing page. I didn't check it. Can we actually check it? Like gusto.com slash start? How does that look yeah. like? Yeah. Check it out. Sure. So gusto.com slash start. Gusto.com uh, slash start. No worries. Many. No worries. There you go. Gusto. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We got a page that uh, ah, so they did it well. See how Hold easy on. Are we going to do the landing page tear down? No, but it's much. just like the Why idea of like, what's the funnel? Because here, what's kind of nice is they start with a question. Have you run payroll this calendar? Yeah, question okay, so mark. So let's say yes. Step one out of, how do you do out it? of five. Okay, let's say we use, we already, so the next one we is how do you survey. currently That's run? brilliant. That's exactly what they need to we do. We use they another. Do a survey to funnel you. How would you describe? Look at this. We work in an office. That's a pretty easy uh, answer. Let's say, yes, we work in an office. What kind of workers? Both. Number five, interested in offering health benefits. Let's say no. Thanks. And oh, it lame. asked me to get started. They missed it. They missed it. They missed it. It's lame. Good try. <laughs> and, you know, they could have they could have put a landing page that went back to the mailer where it's like, we're so happy you opened the opened the mail today. Oh, Let's get you started, you know? Love it. Yeah, Why? so for the listeners, basically after Jack until the step five, it's just a simple like sign up with all your information, like your company and stuff. And yeah, that's that's there's no benefit. It's just like great, fill in all this information about yourself and get thank started. Thank you for your even survey. Know. Even for we don't thank you, we just take your survey. Like okay. Yeah. Okay. So the last thing uh, that there is to this is what do they do on the back of the page? And uh, they threw in a maze where it you says want to starting stop business. Your, um, your, your sharing screen so we can see it better. Yeah, why not? Sure. So it says starting business can be hard. And then they have like a maze where they cover oh, cool. certain things. It is cool, but until this For is your like, kids to play with. This is the closest thing to a call to action. Can you read that, Jeremy? Learn more at gusto.com slash start. It's funny yeah, because you don't really learn more. It's a survey. <laughs> but it's so tiny. And that is true. true also. It's so small. Like if you, if I'm holding this paper in my hand, I still don't even see, unless I'm like following. You have to play. Them, you have like, to play their maze to find out. So my takeaway is A, don't make your prospects play a maze to find out what you want. <laughs> um and B, just be very clear. People are going to have a need when they receive your cold email or your LinkedIn or your mailer or your radio. You have to tell them what you want them to do as a next step or else you're leaving them hanging. Okay. Um, it, I, I want to put this disclaimer, Jack, is that I believe that we are ultra harsh on them because honestly, I think this is a great, um, you know, if someone starts cold email straight away, or start, you know, doing things from from scratch. I think it's a great base to have. Honestly, they got a lot of good things already. Or the and cold email, the mailer, yeah, both. Yeah, I think I think both. It's like they, they got all the elements, and I think it's it's a great base to have. And you know, Jack and I are just suggesting a few things that could definitely make it easier, like to improve it quite drastically on some of the parts. But uh, overall, I I think it's pretty a positive impact on me personally. What is it on you? Were you like offended? Hell no, annoyed? absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. So number one, the follow-up that added nothing. Yeah, that's lame. Even though they had seven other services to talk about, they didn't write it. They just went for another cute dog picture. Absolutely not. That's a waste. And then having pretty much no CTA across both emails that's and the mailer too. tells me that... Uh, but they got Whatever. dogs. Bear down. It tells me they wasted money. They wasted money. Sure. sure, they probably won some business from it, but they could have won a lot more if they had a call, to, a clear, consistent call to action. And the landing page actually approached them step by step as they were coming from a mailer. You personalize the testimonial based on state. I mean, it's not. Jack, that you, you don't know the game. This is an investor money. That's not their money. That's okay. And if that's the case, I feel less bad for them. But, you know, in, in my business, I, 
I get fired if I don't get results. So I, I have no <laughs> tolerance for that. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm not as peachy about it. Um, what can I say? So yeah, you, you got, uh, if uh, someone from Gusto or Gusto or is actually listening to this episode, they could always contact Jack, uh, you know, Jack at salesbright.com. Here we go. There you go. Um, yeah. If, uh, okay. So we can leave it at that. There's, there's a lot more um, probably to, to unpack with the world of direct mail. Uh, but hopefully if you were considering multi-touch, uh, this broke some of that open for you. So you can have a little bit more, let's say, insight as you tackle it. And uh, stop sending rubbish emails. Uh, otherwise, Jack is going to tear them apart and, and me too. <laughs> it's a teardown. That's what we're all here for, right? I mean, I'm, I won't even add a disclaimer. If, if you like the podcast, guys, check out course.quickmail.io. We put uh, more goodies there. Last week, we added a, a new section on personalization that you can check out. So give it a go if you want a deeper dive, if you want even more than this podcast can deliver course.quickmail.io. And that's the CTA. See? Yeah. You got to walk the walk. Go and check it out <laughs> and make your mind. There you go. All right, Jeremy. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Jack. Great cool. cast. Bye.